Okay, so now it came to be understood that, ooh, okay, these ribosomes, remember, they, they kind of look like this. We'll get to them in a second. They're, they look like snowman, a big part and a little part, large subunit, small subunit, right? These are like the chefs in our, in our little analogy, right? And they're going to somehow read this piece of RNA that has these bases, you know, A, U, C, G, and all kinds of, in all kinds of orders that mean all kinds of different recipes for all kinds of different proteins. So what's the language? Well, I've already told you with that other diagram that it ended up that we humans figured out that it's three bases at a time. That's what this chef reads, three bases at a time, okay? So here is what got figured out in the late 50s and mid 60s. The entire genetic code got figured out. This entire genetic code is the same for you and I as it is for a cockroach and a pine tree and your puppy dog. A pine tree cells could read your DNA because on an RNA molecule, when C, A, and U are next to each other in a part of that RNA molecule, a ribosome in any kind of organism is going to say, oh, I know what to do with that word. I'm going to put the amino acid histidine here. This is the language. This language turned out being redundant, right? What does redundant mean? I got four words that all mean arginine. In fact, I got two more down here. I got six words that mean the same thing. Our English language is quite redundant, right? Right? But it's, it's redundant, but it is not, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It's on the next slide, I think. Uh, um, oh, I'll think of it when I get there. Ha. What it means, though, is that CCC and CCU might both mean proline, but they only mean proline. They don't mean sometimes proline, sometimes means serine. Right? They're not, con they don't contradict. They're not contradictory. There's another word for that, too, that I'll, I'll remember in a second. It's been a long day already. So this is the protein chart, the codon chart that you need to be able to recognize. I'm glad I just said that word, codon. Okay. This is the word that somebody chose. It simply means code word for these little three nucleotide with three bases, these little three base segments on a messenger RNA are called codons, right? If this codon is CCA, how did that get put together? It got put together from a DNA template that had GGT in line like that. This led to the making of that, right? But this is not called a codon. Only on a messenger RNA molecule do we have a three base segment that we use the word codon for. This chart is based on three base segments of messenger RNA and associating each one of those to a particular amino acid. Okay. Now you notice there's three codons that say stop. That's not an amino acid abbreviation. That means this is the end of the message. They're like a period. They're like a punctuation mark, right? And then you have one that says not only start, but also put methionine in the beginning. Notice the stop codons don't say put an amino acid here and then stop. They just say stop. So that's a little difference in the start and stop commands. And there's only one start codon. AUG. There's three stop codons. So we're going to practice this in class, right? This is as simple as you can be, but you're going to have to do this on a test and on an EOC test. You will have a codon chart. You don't have to memorize that, right? But if you are told that this represents a sequence of bases on a messenger RNA strand, and you remember that messenger RNA is what that codon chart was based on, three 
base sequences on a messenger RNA, then all you got to do is, if they tell you to start at the beginning, this gets a little trickier in a second, right? Then you simply do that. CAG, look it up in the chart. That means whatever. CCC, that means proline. I just remember that one, right? AAG means another one. GCC means another one. And this is the sequence of amino acids that's going to be put together from this recipe, right? So now what we're determining here, what this is going to determine is the primary structure of a protein. We'll review that a little bit. That's what that means, right? Which amino acid is where? Okay, so um, if you're asked to do this then, What's the base sequence of the DNA that coded for this thing up here? Then you simply need to remember what the complements are. And you need to remember if this is DNA, that it's going to be T and not U. That this is going to be C and G and G and G and T. And when you get to a when you get to a U, not to way down here, when you get to a U, you got to remember the DNA that said put a U here was A, adenine, right? One more little term here while I have it here. Wherever you start reading, and here we started at the end. We'll, we'll complicate that in a minute. Wherever you start reading this message, that establishes what's called the reading frame, right? It's simply every three bases after from where you started. So now I'll just get a little messy. Um, what if we started right here? What if we started right here? Then our message is going to be different, right? Then every three bases is going to give us a different sequence of codons, which will make a different sequence of amino acids. I'm just foreshadowing something that we're coming to. Okay, so that's the word ambiguous, right? Ambiguous. So if when I say, I'll say this in class, if I say, look at my dog, and I'm talking about, you know, that floppy-eared puppy dog, that's a dog, right? If I'm talking about that, you understand what I mean. But if I say, look at this dog, and I'm talking about Johnny, that's very confusing to a person who's learning the English language because you have used this ambiguously, right, to mean two different things. The code is not ambiguous. Again, CCC and CCG, they both mean proline. That's redundant, but they only mean proline. They don't mean this or that. Okay. This is a very neat picture, right? And this is a huge concept that we humans have figured out about life that this genetic code is universal i already said that i don't think i used that word your puppy dog can read your dna in his cells so can a cockroach so can a pine tree you might not like those ideas but it is and what that suggests that this genetic code and these chemicals are the same in every organism what it suggests is that all these organisms, cockroach, you, pine tree, they got this common thing from a common ancestor, the same place. This, and, and many other, but this is probably the strongest evidence of similarity that suggests common relatedness. It suggests a common single beginning of life on Earth. We'll get to that unit later. But this picture right here is a very famous one in biology. This is a tobacco plant. And what they did, just to see if it would work, right? They didn't try to make this tobacco plant light up to use it as a light, you know, source. But just because they knew it was neat if it would work, they took a gene from a firefly that codes for the protein that makes uh, that that fluoresces that makes the firefly light up and they inserted it into the cells of a little embryonic tobacco plant that grew into this thing and the fact that it glowed like this was conclusive evidence that 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 tobacco plant could read firefly DNA 
it's got the same code it can make the same kind of protein and this was the first time this kind of gene transplant this would be genetic engineering was done from one eukaryotic organism to another that's why this became so famous um, but since then we humans have engineered lots of things to be able to glow including fish that you can buy in the store including just to see if it could work with all kinds of things kitty cats puppy dogs and maybe someday in class we'll make you glow we'll see okay um so so this is a a definite definite we you're going to get this on a test kind of concept and a big one and when we get to evolution we'll talk about it a lot